one of the most powerful simple machines is the screw, but it's also the most time consuming and difficult to produce. Fortunately, legendary inventor Leonardo da Vinci had some ideas to speed up the process. The machine he designed was groundbreaking, but he may have never actually made it in real life. So let's put his design to the test and see if his invention will actually revolutionize our machine building abilities. Of the classic six simple machines, the screw was the last one that was invented and is probably the most difficult to make. I previously unlocked this technology when I made a screw press to press olive oil for making soap. Basically, I had to do it the traditional way of hand carving a screw. It was very difficult, very time consuming, and not the most effective. I think one of the biggest issues that this channel faces is the difficulty of achieving precision when you're just using hand tools that you made from scratch. So in this video, the goal is to produce this machine that Da Vinci envisioned that should hopefully improve and make a much more precise screw. Traditionally, screws from the very beginning were either hand carved or filed into metal ones. To make a basic fastening screw for a long period of time, you would just forge an actual screw and then file the actual spiral into it in a very time consuming process. I let uh, Theo do this and it took him pretty much an entire day to make just one screw. With a little bit of experience, you could probably cut those numbers down, but it's still not very efficient very time consuming, not fun. Today, the threads on a screw can be pretty easily carved in using a modern lathe, which uses a lead screw to as kind of a template to carve it in in a consistent manner. But that technology and basically the great grandfather is what we're building today with Da Vinci's device. But that technology to carve an actual thread into a screw is relatively modern in all of history. So it's not surprising that Leonardo da Vinci, who devised a lot of machines that required screws, tried to come up with a better method for making them. And the machine that he came up with is potentially the great grandfather of the modern method of making threaded screws. Thank you to today's sponsor, Bombas. Bombas makes some of the most comfortable socks, underwear, and t-shirts you'll ever wear. The best part about having Bombas sponsor this video is that I legitimately own Bombas socks, and they're probably some of the most comfortable socks that I've ever worn. Their socks have built-in arch support, natural feeling materials, and no annoying toe seams. They're great for every occasion, from running, hiking, or just staying cozy. But what really sets Bombas apart is their mission. For every item you purchase, they donate one to someone in need. Socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the top three most requested clothing items at shelters, and Bombas is helping meet that need. Over 100 million items donated so far. And it's not just socks either. Every product is designed to make you feel great while doing good. If you're on the fence, Bombas also offers a 100% happiness guarantee. Free returns, free exchanges, no questions asked. They got you covered. So if you want to feel good and do good, head to bombas.com slash HTME and use code HTME20 for 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas.com slash HTME. Unfortunately, like even a modern lathe, making screws requires some form of reference screw. Perhaps even worse, Da Vinci's design actually requires two identical reference screws. Previously, I just measured consistent marks on a stick and connected them into a spiral. This result ended up being a little less than ideal though. So we experimented with a few methods of making a consistent mark. And the challenge so far has been how to evenly cut threads on a rod. I think ultimately we are gonna have to just grind them down by hand, but getting them evenly spaced has been the real trick. So we started with a kind of tool like this uh, that we just kind of whipped together really quick. With just a sharp blade, inserted into a block of wood at an angle, and then a hole drilled through the block uh, to accommodate the rod. Initially, we ended up with an angle like this, um, which I think will work, but I think we can also go a little more aggressive. So ultimately with this tool, we ended up with threading like this. And the way it works is basically you just fit it onto the end of the rod and just start turning. And the blade will cut a groove. Basically all we're doing is marking the thread at this point. Um, and then we'll go back through and just hand file all the threads. But this is how the tool works. So you just keep twisting and cutting. It's worth noting too um, that because of our gearing system, these three gears are basically going to drive these in reverse. And so these rods are ultimately going to have to be reverse threaded so that it cuts the central rod in the right direction. So you just get nice, evenly spaced threads. Then it was just a matter of manually carving out these threads with saws, chisels, and files. With the reference lead screws, now we just need to add some gears and we can start assembling our device.
Basically, we're gonna work with a three gear system here. So we have a larger central gear and then two outer gears. These are gonna act as the driver for the guide rails. For the nuts that will follow the reference screws, we went for a simple solution of wrapping some of the wire we made around the threads and then glued it into two halves of the wooden nut to act as the threading. So this is what we have assembled so far. This is our screw making machine minus the cutting tool. Currently we just have a pencil hooked up to it so we can kind of gauge the thread. Essentially we have just like a basic frame and then we have uh, the cutting tool and sort of like guide block, I guess you can call it on this end. We have two threaded rods and then the rod that is set up to be cut in the middle here, which is free sliding inside the jig here. Um, and then on the opposite side, we've got a basic three gear system. Um, it looks like we kind of lucked out with the gear ratios in a way that, as you can see here, it'll be cutting threads at about, I don't know, half an inch, maybe a little over half an inch. As you advance the gear system, it'll pull the block forward. And as you can see, it'll run along the center thread, which spins at its own rate, not necessarily matched with this, just based on whatever gear ratio we have. And it'll ride along the rod and slowly but surely cut into it. We've got two pegs in the back here. You can pull these out. Um, they're just pressure fit. And then you can lift the whole thing up and pull the whole thing back, which allows you to replace the rods with any size thread you want and the gears with any size gears you want. So once you're done producing a rod, we just have a our pliers here, simple pin holding everything in place. And then you can pop this out and potentially replace it with any other size dowel you want because the block itself is also interchangeable. I think we've got it going. The only thing we have left is basically to put in a center hole here and then put in a cutting tool. So as far as the cutting tool itself, we did come up with several different iterations and designs. Ultimately, we came up with something like this. All we ended up doing is cutting a few small teeth in here, uh, thanks to Theo. And it did occur to us sort of after the fact that with this cutting tool, we can come up with different versions of different widths and cut different widths of threading. After a bit of experimentation with the cutting device, we eventually settled on a saw blade held down with tension from a spring of some of our wire. Interestingly, coiled springs were a much later invention, supposedly not being invented until almost 300 years after Da Vinci. With the adjustable tension, it's now just a process of running the machine back and forth. Each time the blade bit cuts a little bit deeper and deeper into the channel, following the exact same path every time. But this is only half the challenge. We still need to find a way to make the receiving nut for our bolt. Our wire method worked for the machine, but might not provide the strongest long-term solution. Ideally, you want to be able to just carve your own threads into the wood. Today, this is done with a drill tap, a bit that gradually carves the threading into a hole. To make one of these ourselves, I found an old diagram to effectively make our bolt into a form of drill tap. But first you need a reference nut, which will keep our cutting edge aligned with the threading of our bolt. For that, we use a method that was likely used for early nuts. Pointed dowels at several points aligned to the screw thread. There we go. <laughs> nice. Just attach those back together and we're good to go. And these are adjustable. I haven't glued these in yet, so we can always fidget with that, but I'd say that's functional. Then we turn this into a jig with our target nut attached further down, with a plain hole pre-drilled into it. Then along the thread of our bolt, we placed a small cutting bit that can be slowly worked through the nut, cutting the threaded grooves into it. This cutting bit is then adjusted as we go, allowing you to carve deeper and deeper as needed. With a now functioning and highly precise bolt and nut, we can make a very useful device, such as a bench vise. Basically, you have the nut mounted on the back of the bench here, um, and then you just have uh, a couple of laminated boards. You can lock everything in place. So after a lot of hard work, mostly by Elliot, who took the lead on this project, 
but we now have the completed device, the screw cutting machine. I might be a little too specific to be called a lathe. But this device by Leonardo da Vinci does actually prove to work quite well. I took a bit of a challenge to actually get it up and running and carving in a nice consistent manner, but we have been able to now achieve really nice spirals. A little bit better than my first attempt by doing it by hand a lot more precise, and probably most important is the ability to carve nuts, which actually isn't a Leonardo invention, but it actually dates back to the ancient Greeks and is a method here. It's actually very similar to how we do it today. So I think this is going to be a big game changer for helping us get to a little bit of level of higher precision. Because when you carve things by hand, it can only be so accurate. Just little variations and such can make it pretty much impossible to achieve the level of precision we're actually looking for. So screws help a ton with that. You now make a really nice vise. And we've kind of cheated a little bit by having a bench vise before this. Officially have that unlocked here with our new bench vise. We never quite got around to the process of testing if this could be actually used to cut a metal screw. There's no reason it can't though. I think it, it will probably require a lot more fine tuning and adjusting to actually achieve that. But the concept is all here. And probably just a process of making a file that actually work on here and then running it back and forth. It'd be really nice to find it, some sort of mechanism that allow it to crank all the way one way and then back in one continuous motion. So you can hook it up to an onyx source like a water wheel. So definitely some more improvements that can be made to this. And hopefully we can upgrade this in the future for carving metal, potentially start making uh, actual screws that are very handy for uh, attaching things together. So historically, it's not clear if Leonardo da Vinci actually built this machine in real life. His design actually shows the threading going backwards in the middle, which might mean that he never actually tested it, but also might just be kind of a classic thing he did of leaving some errors in there so people can't copy his designs perfectly. A similar design to this, a little bit simpler, actually came out contemporarily with him that might be more accurately the, the actual grandfather to the screw cutting lathe today. But ultimately this is a very similar concept that happened to be invented at about the same time. So the, the concepts behind this machine will be very useful in our future evolutions of the lathe. So I think we're gonna try and upgrade this device in the future, but even if we don't, we're gonna be applying this concept to any lathe we eventually build into the future to basically apply the exact same concept for carving a threaded screw. Probably most important about building this device is it allows us to make accurate screws and threading, which in turn allows us to make other Da Vinci devices. So this is the Da Vinci device that builds Da Vinci devices. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Without you, this won't be possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.